And good afternoon. I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Franklin with WW Louisiana. Just wanted to present a brief update on the four o'clock advisory with Hurricane Helene. Really nothing uh, has changed nothing unusual that has been happening. Uh, one thing that we didn't want to see was that rapid intensification. We have seen that steadily all day today and at the moment still hanging at a strong category three and just on the threshold of becoming a category four, which it will likely become right up to the point of landfall or right before making landfall as we're expecting this to continue intensifying right up to the point of landfall later on this evening. This is a high resolution look at the visible satellite, so it uses daylight imagery and takes an image every single minute. So this is as real time as you can possibly get. And boy, we see that well defined eye and even what appears to be even additional clearing within the eye and something we had also been able to see within the core of the storm are several little minor vortices, little spins. That just means the core of the storm is very healthy. It will continue to, to intensify. That has been happening all day today and will continue to occur right up to the point of landfall. Already much of the state of Florida Florida being inundated by the strong and increasing winds and heavy rainfall. Surge has already started to build up along the Florida coast and really the only part of the state of Florida not being directly impacted by any negative weather would be around the Pensacola area. That's the only part of the state, maybe toward Fort Walton Beach, that is not getting in on the storm. Now, obviously, as you go west from the center, it's a bit better, but still close to the core from Panama City uh, beyond Tallahassee will be feeling the worst parts of the storm and the Big Bend getting some of the worst of the storm surge still estimates of 15 to 20 feet. At the moment, you can clearly see that well defined eye within radar range of most of the radar observation stations out of the state of Florida. Winds are at 125 at the moment. Pressure has been falling steadily 951. Now it is on the threshold of becoming a category four, which is only 130 miles per hour. So that is likely to occur. And as I've said, it will likely continue to intensify as it does move inland. Now it's going to be moving very quickly. So with that fast motion, at least rainfall totals widespread won't be as great as they could have been, but still in, uh, anticipating some significant flooding, not only for much of the state of Florida, but well inland. Another concern is because it is moving so quickly as a major hurricane, it's going to take some time to weaken. And so it could possibly still be a four or excuse me, excuse me, a two, so still a strong two as it is moving into Georgia after landfall is a four, still a two through Georgia and possibly a one or a two as it passes over Metro Atlanta. So for Atlanta, and a major metropolitan area across the nation, they could be seeing some very intense winds and some significant flooding issues. And that is why we've seen the hurricane warning extend so far north. Now at the moment, Metro Atlanta not included in the hurricane warning. In other words, we're not anticipating the hurricane for sustained winds, but possibly hurricane gusts. Now I wouldn't be surprised to maybe see that area kind of highlighted, pointing to the watch, to the warning. We may see that kind of preemptively done in maybe later advisories for Atlanta only because we'll likely see hurricane force wind gusts across Metro Atlanta. And as far as the flooding goes, that is not something you see very often, this high risk of flooding. And that extends, if you remember yesterday, it was kind of a pocket around Tallahassee near landfall and then some pockets up in North Georgia and toward the uh, western parts of the Carolinas. Now it's a band that extends from Tallahassee, Panama City, almost entirety through the central and western, or excuse me, the central and southwestern part of Georgia, and including now the kind of Piedmont and foothills of the Appalachians to Greenville, South Carolina, Asheville, and Boone, North Carolina. So these are areas that will see significant flooding. And these aren't flat terrain areas. These are hilly to then turning kind of mountainous farther north. So you're going to get some significant landslides and valley flooding with that heavy rainfall threat as it continues, something that we don't often see these storms kind of maintaining that strength with the winds and also the uh, just sheer amount of water, rainfall and inland flooding. That usually is one of the most deadly parts of, uh, of hurricanes is the inland flooding threat. And that's something that the Hurricane Center has been really trying to emphasize better with this new way of showing the watches warnings farther inland, as well as really emphasizing the rainfall threat farther inland as well. So we'll be watching this very closely again for Southeast Louisiana. This is not an issue for us, but a lot of folks wanting to head up to Atlanta. Now for game day on Sunday, storm will be long gone. As a matter of fact, kind of going back in uh, our uh, 
uh, track here, just showing again, timing wise, it'll be around uh, south of Macon at about 1 a.m. in the morning and then about one in the afternoon, already well to the north of Atlanta, probably moving into western or excuse me, eastern Tennessee, western North Carolina. So by Saturday, Sunday, conditions will have dramatically improved in Atlanta. The big question is going to be the impacts from those strong winds as well as the very heavy flooding rain threat that these areas will see within the next, uh, say, uh, 12 to even 24 hours, and the impacts are going to be significant and very widespread. For now, again, this is not an issue for southeast Louisiana. Clearly, this is going to be a big Florida storm, but also parts of Georgia and the Carolinas in the coming days. For now, we're going to have, uh, kind of end things here with a discussion for uh, the very latest on Hurricane Aline, not anticipating anything new to occur as we watch this steadily through the evening as it is going to be nearing landfall, probably a little bit later on tonight, maybe a closer to our 10 o'clock newscast starting to make landfall just to the south of Tallahassee. For now, I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Franklin.